creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much for joining me today for Creative Living. We're going to learn to make some cuff bracelets. We'll find out why breakfast is the best meal of the day and show some easy projects made with edger punches. One of my guests today is Marissa Puelco, and she's a designer and crafter. She's going to show how to make some cuff bracelets using shape cutters from her own collection. Her business is Modern Surrealist, and she lives in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. What makes breakfast the best meal of the day? Registered dietitian and author Pat Baird is going to answer this question for us. She'll also discuss the use of my plate to determine what to eat at every meal. She represents the National Got Milk Campaign, and she's from Greenwich, Connecticut. My first guest today is Megan Tommy, and she's a former spokesperson for EK Success Brands in Kansas City, Missouri. Megan's going to show a variety of border punched projects from scrapbook layouts to cards to home decor and more. Megan, it's so nice to have you here, and I was telling you how much I love to do scrapbooking and card making, and you said you did too, but what's amazing to me when I go shopping is the, the amount of new things that are available for, for crafters. Oh yeah, and, and one of my favorites are punches, specifically edger punches, because they make you look so good like that. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, really they give you the intricacy that you can't really get with scissors, even decorative scissors mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. So if you if you look in front mm -hmm. of you, you can see kind of some of those details and intricacies yeah, that a punch will give made, you. This was made, and this is what we're talking about, right? Exactly, this. kind of that um, really pretty scallop, uh -huh. and that's just a regular edge punch from uh, EK Tools. Uh -huh. uh, they're really good at making edger punches and punches oh. in general, really. Uh -huh. And one of their newest things is what you're seeing right in front of oh, you. This and this? That's a large edger punch. Uh -huh. So a regular edge punch uh, is about a half inch deep, mm -hmm. and this is really an inch and a quarter deep. Wow. So it really kind of gets into your paper a lot more, uh -huh. and it gives you a bigger effect. It does. Uh, I've pretty. got some examples over here. Um, it's not just for scrapbooking. It's no. not just for card making. Home decor uh, that's items. That's right. That you know, is if beautiful. you've got a wedding or baby shower uh -huh. coming up and you want to personalize a candle or a centerpiece, mm -hmm. this is a really fun way, this kind of <gasps> double arch up here. Uh, and then down below, well, I, this was made, this arch was made with a regular punch mm -hmm. that you can see here. And you can see that design oh, yeah, you can see it. on the front uh -huh. there. Uh, and then down here, uh, you can see these big, like, chrysanthemum Those looking flowers. Are huge. Again, that's one of the, the big punches. Right, uh -huh. the large edger punch. Uh -huh. And again, that's a, an inch and a quarter deep. And you could even punch both sides of a, of a strip of paper, like we've done here. And you oh, can make a chain. Isn't that, that fun? That is beautiful. It's, it's really oh, fun. Can you imagine cutting that out by hand? No. <laughs> With an exacto <laughs> knife? No. <laughs> not at all, not at all. So um, I'll show you a little bit uh, okay. about how to punch on either side there. So we've got our paper already mm -hmm. measured out. The great thing about this punch is that it's it's really easy to use. It's ergonomic. It's got oh. this slide lock on the back here, and that, that's what opens oh, that it up. Opens it. Uh -huh. That means that when it's all closed, you can stack them up and keep them nice and organized. Oh. Here's a great uh, thing, too. You can see that design is on the top, but the design is on the edge, the wings as well. So you can well. see where you're placing the paper. Exactly, as you uh -huh. work your way down. I'm just going to start in the middle just to show you here. Mm -hmm. So we've got our paper kind of butted up against this edge big punch and oh, you can see that how there pretty. and then what I like to do is line it up on the other side by flipping it over and that way you can line it up and make sure that you're just right yeah. I hope that's right let's see if I'm lined up okay let's see what happens it's easier when you can put it against Maybe the table in there you did a great job. Yeah, and so <laughs> there you can see. And again, you just work your way down the paper and you mm -hmm. can end up with a, a fun chain. Well, now how do you know how far to, to put, how, how would you know how to place that next one? Well, Is you it can, marked, or do yeah, you look you at it on the back? You can kind of see this here. You see where that lines up right there? Oh, okay, that's what I wondered. Yeah, and that's how you how you know where to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but I pre-measured my paper, so if you're uh -huh. going to make a chain like that, you definitely want to make Start sure Start with, yeah, have the right length. Right. It's so pretty. Yeah. I'm going to clean up a little bit. And then um, one of my favorite edger punches, again, this is a, a regular edger punch, um, oh, is the ribbon I, do I think that's punch. so pretty. 
It's really fun because it gives you this fun effect that you can thread your ribbon through. Uh -huh. Like you see this double strand on the card there. So I'm going to show you how okay, I did something like that. that. I'll give you this. Okay. Uh, I've got my paper here and I'm going to open my punch. Again, there's that slide lock mm -hmm. on the back. And uh, I'm going to line it up. You're going to start on the edge this time. Yeah. Rather than in the yeah, middle. Yeah, and again, uh -huh. if, if you wonder where you are, you can always use that back end and you can kind of see where the paper lines up on that edge. Especially for that second and third punch. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and punch that. Mm -hmm. So there you can oh, kind of yeah. see how it punches out. And again, I'll, I'll use my lined up piece, but then you can also see how it lines up on that front side. Okay. That's important. Yeah. So yeah, you oh. see I work my way down mm -hmm. and I end up with something like this. Uh-huh. Right? Yes. N now the fun part. Now the fun <laughs> part. Uh, I, I've got a piece of ribbon here and all you do, I like starting from the back just oh, because uh -huh. you're going to have your edge on the uh -huh. very end there. And then, yeah, you just, you just sew just back and forth. Just thread it out. through. Uh -huh. Or you could skip two and, I mean, yeah, there's lots exactly. of things you can do with it. And them. so you keep going all the way down mm -hmm. and you'll end up with this. Isn't that pretty? Right? Uh -huh. So this is my edge that I've got for a card that I want to make. And I've got this card right here. It's already pre-scored, pre-ready mm -hmm. pre to go. And what it's I want to do is just put it on the edge here. It's kind of a fun front piece. I'll do this side. Got my adhesive. Mm -hmm. I just attach that. And then I've got a, just another strip here. And I'm gonna oh, you make can it really pretty. use all those little scraps this oh, way too, I tell can't you? you? I tell <laughs> you. That's the best way to use them. It is. And then I've just got a little embellishment here that I'm going to pop on the front. Right there. What a beautiful card and how professional it yeah. looks. But I really think that ribbon edge is what adds the texture and the mm -hmm. interest that makes it kind of a really high-end kind of card. Oh, it, it does. It's That's beautiful. Thanks, thanks. Okay, let's and take then, a look at some uh, maybe making frames. That's, yeah. Or, you know, I always like if I'm going to make a really good scrapbook layout, I might as well frame it and use it as home decor for a uh -huh. while too. I hadn't thought about doing that. So this is another way. This is one of those larger punch edge, mm -hmm. large edge punch, sorry. And uh, you can see how you use both sides of it, just like I did that just like you did the, one. Uh -huh. And you can really add some really fun interest. And like you said, you can't really get this by cutting it out. No. A punch is the way to go. And I love cutting, but I would never have the patience I to know, do that. I know. So now you've got an alternative. So then this could be framed for a while, maybe when the, the baby's older. You could sure. take that out and put it in your scrapbook. Sure. I had never thought about doing that. Sure, that's and my little this tip. this is a, a different punch. Again, the same thing. You're going to punch both sides and work your way down the line, and then you can add some really fun borders. That is so and, uh, pretty. Yeah, it's mm. really great. Oh, I can't wait to try it. Thank Good. you. Thank you. Pat, thank you so much for being here today. When I was growing up, my mother insisted that we have a good breakfast every morning before we left for school, and then sometimes not as much on Saturday, but then Sunday was the big country breakfast, which oh, I always yes. looked forward to. And so I've heard all my life how important breakfast is. Uh, you know, I'm so happy to hear that because when people ask me what my number one nutrition tip is, uh -huh. It's to eat, eat breakfast. breakfast. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, so many people are skipping breakfast these days, and research shows just time and time again that breakfast eaters weigh less, they have better focus and concentration, uh -huh. they tend to have better overall diets, and they actually tend to be less likely to miss what we call shortfall short nutrients. Oh. These are nutrients that as a population, we don't eat enough of. They're calcium, vitamin D, potassium, and fiber. Mm -hmm. So breakfast is that perfect way to fuel up for the day mm -hmm as well as to get a jump start on good nutrition. Well, and I can tell too, if I have skipped breakfast for one reason or the other, mid-morning, I'm really hungry. 
So if yes. I tend to overeat then, it just continues throughout the day. But if you eat breakfast and then lunch and then uh, your dinner at night, you, you balance it out. You your do. energy level stays up. And you know, a lot of people have trouble, the breakfast skippers especially, mm -hmm. of what should I eat and I don't have time. Mm -hmm. And I always refer people back to my plate. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people don't realize is my plate is actually the visual representation of the dietary guidelines. Mm -hmm. And the dietary guidelines specifically call out breakfast. And they say that skipping breakfast is one of the selected behaviors that leads to weight gain. Uh -huh. And we so, know that the whole country is facing that problem now absolutely. of obesity. Absolutely. And you know, my plate works for all meals. Oh. People think it's mm -hmm. just for dinner because it is a plate, clearly. Half the plate should be fruits and vegetables, some whole grain, smaller amounts of protein. But the missing message mm -hmm. of my plate is this little glass of milk, that we should be having dairy milk mm -hmm. at every single meal. Mm -hmm. and Go ahead. You probably were like me when I grew up. We had milk to drink at every meal. And I did with my kids, but I've noticed that with my grandkids and the younger generation, they aren't serving milk. They're serving water with the meals. And it's so important because to me, milk is a real superfood. Mm -hmm. It's got nine essential nutrients. It's got eight grams of high quality protein. Mm -hmm. Protein adds satiety. It makes us feel fuller, longer. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, protein is often overlooked mm -hmm. at breakfast. So let's see if what are some I various types of protein. I want to show you something very protein. simple. If you're one of those people who's running out with a cereal bar, great, keep doing it, but add a add glass milk. of milk to uh -huh. it. If you have some fruit in the morning, strawberries, a banana, put them in a blender mm -hmm. with milk and make a... This to me is the ultimate uh -huh. easy, nutritious, uh -huh breakfast. Or some yogurt. You can even add some yogurt with you your can. milk. Uh -huh. You know, everybody always has milk in the house. Right. So this is an easy way to do it. Um, now, now, this looks very familiar. This I, yeah. I eat that type of cereal, actually, every single morning. A lot of people have cereal and milk for breakfast. And I have to tell you, they're on the bonus track. Oh, good. The reason that they're on the bonus track is the protein that's in milk is a complete high quality protein. Oh. It actually enhances the plant protein. So you're oh. really boosting up your whole protein intake by uh -huh. combining cereal and milk. Now, I hate to ask this because it'll let you know what I really like to do is to add a bit of sugar, either brown sugar or white sugar. Now that's probably yes. a no-no. Uh, you know what, it's a question of quantity. So you want to have a small amount. And when you shop for cereal, you really should be shopping for a cereal that is high in fiber and low in sugar. Uh -huh. And if you are buying one of those high fiber cereals that is only bran, you need to add a little bit of sugar to uh -huh. it. And well, then good. you'll get Thank the you. sweetness of the milk that <laughs> will enhance it. But I do like it. the raisins because that adds some sweetness yes. and you some can, more iron I and know. protein. That's good. And more fiber. Mm -hmm. So uh, now, this doesn't look like breakfast no, to me. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but you know what? I happen to be a fan of non-traditional breakfast. Oh. And again, we're thinking easy. We're thinking quick. So you can pop some soup in the microwave. Soup. Put it in a thermos. I like to make tomato soup with milk. Uh -huh. Again, too. boost uh -huh. up the protein. You can have a, a turkey sandwich, a half a turkey sandwich, a little bit of fruit. Leftover baked macaroni. For breakfast, that's or, interesting. Well, I happen to love pasta, so uh -huh. this is high on my list. Uh -huh. It's really important for folks to make their own baked macaroni. This mm -hmm. is the best way you control the fat, you control the sodium, mm -hmm. you make it with low fat milk, cheese, maybe, I like mm -hmm. to add some jalapeno peppers. Mm -hmm. um, grab a hard cooked egg, mm -hmm. some fruit, again, it's protein. And I like to cook six or seven eggs at once. That's and then exactly what I ready. do and I put them in the fridge just uh -huh. like that and you grab it and uh -huh. go. You know what people often forget about protein is we're so focused on protein and muscle is that it's an essential nutrient. We need protein, hair, skin, nails, yes, to build stronger muscle. Uh -huh. We also need it for hormones, enzymes, antibodies. You know, mm -hmm. so protein, this is the it's way important. to go, especially mm -hmm. in the morning. 
And so. I think a banana is the best thing. It, it's like in its own container. Yes. And how easy is that? There's really no excuse for skipping breakfast. I don't think so either. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, on a final note, I just want to remind everybody to use my plate for all meals, including breakfast. Uh -huh. And to team up easy things like a cereal bar and a glass of milk, like a hard cooked egg with a banana. Mm -hmm. um, keep it simple, but get all those benefits of breakfast. And I think that's it, keeping it simple because people are in a hurry, they're rushed, they're trying to get the kids out the yes. door and everyone off to work anymore. But if it is simple and if you do have things already made up, I mean, you can make the macaroni and cheese and have Pop a big it in bowl the microwave. Uh -huh, and just put a serving out. Yes. And serving sizes are very important. It really is. You know, you want to have about two-thirds of a cup of baked macaroni. Two-thirds. That's uh -huh. why I say have a half of turkey uh -huh. sandwich. It's just enough. It'll get your protein up. Have a small bowl of cereal. Mm -hmm. You do. Serving sizes are really important. Moderation. Moderation. Well, thank you so much for reminding us. And also, I know lots of people who like leftover pizza, and I hear that that's a very good okay, uh, there you dish go. to have. Yes. <laughs> thank you very much, Pat. Marissa, thank you so much for being here today, and I was so excited that you were bringing cutters. A lot of people may know about these, but there's so many new things on the market, and um, they haven't replaced scissors. Certainly, we need those, but these can do such intricate cutting, and it makes it so much faster. Yeah, it's really fun to crank it through these machines. They're die-cutting machines. We've got uh -huh. the Big Shot from Sizzix uh -huh. and the Sizzix Sophisticut, which is the smaller little portable version. Well, and I have a friend who lives, has two, two different homes, and she loves this because it's so lightweight and, and it's, it's so cute. She just carries her little purse with her and it's her cutter. Yeah, it's adorable. It is. <laughs> well, you love jewelry, and I know you said you specifically designed all of this for cuff jewelry, and uh, by cuff, it's usually a wider piece, and mm -hmm. what's good about your design is that we can make it as small or as big as we want, and that's good for lots of us. Yeah, they're adjustable, they're really easy to do, and it's basically a system of cuff jewelry with a base cuff. That's what this is, the triangular shape, or rectangular it's shape rectangular, here. Yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. And then on top of the base cuff, you can overlay all the different uh, overlays. We've got the city, the checker, mm -hmm. the cheetah. I love the zipper. Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah, it's fun. Okay, so you and then you have all these dies that, like you say, coordinate. So which one's the base die? The... This is the base cuff. Okay. And it's just your basic rectangle with the four holes. Uh -huh. And those holes are used to um, thread stretchy string through, or you can do other types ribbons of closures, or whatever. ribbons, yeah, uh -huh. all kinds of stuff. So these are just some different designs. And this one's different, though. Yeah, that's called the magic bracelet, and it really uh -huh. is magic. Uh, you can die cut that piece and then you braid it and it just mm -hmm. turns into a really cool little leather braid. jewelry works really well mm -hmm. with leather or pleather uh -huh. or uh, fabric uh-huh something moldable yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay and i've seen fa uh, paper before but i don't think i've ever seen any this beautiful so is this just regular paper or what no this is my absolute new favorite thing in the universe <laughs> it is called rolux it's so fun to work with and it's just adds that extra sparkle and dazzle oh. To your projects. I can see now where all of these got the extra, just little pop. Yeah. I guess is what it add is. They add pop and wow to all your projects and they come in a wide variety of different patterns and colors and you can run them through your Big Shot or your <laughs> Sophisticut using my dies or your other dies. What What is this about? Eight by ten? Is that kind uh, of, Yeah, it comes in it? a variety of different sizes oh, and does. shapes mm -hmm. and you can cut it to, to suit your dies. Uh -huh. It comes in also now, 12 what's by this? 12. I was thinking about making an outfit out of that. It's <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> I know, I love this. These are adhesive rhinestone sheets from the Buckle Boutique. Oh. And they're beautiful. They come in all different uh, colors and patterns, and they have mm. adhesive backing, so it uh -huh. makes it really quick and easy. We're actually going to make one today mm -hmm. to coordinate with your beautiful. I picked my favorite <laughs> color, of course, which is black. So <laughs> we'll get to see how that works. Certainly. Let's try both machines. I've never used the little Sophisticate. Okay, great. So the first thing you're going to want to do is cut your base cuff, which you're going to do using your Rolex and, and that's this one. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's your base cuff, and I've pre-cut a piece uh, okay. to fit that. So you would does just it matter lay if it's up top? or down? Uh, it does not matter. Oh, okay. Either way will work. So you can run that through there. 
And you want to make your sandwich. Uh huh. It's easy to remember. When I, when I first got one, I thought, now how am I going to remember? And the popping, yeah. that always scared <laughs> me at first. It's amazing uh, how strong these are, machines are. Wow. They can cut through all kinds of things, anywhere from tissue paper all the way up to tin cans. Look at that. Perfect. And how exact, those little, I mean, I could have cut the rectangle out in hardly any time, but the fact that it punches those exactly where you want them. Exactly, every time. So you uh -huh. can make a whole bunch of these for a party or an event. That's what I'm thinking about, gifts. This is great. Okay. Yeah. So we have, we got this one done. Now this is what you call an overlay. That's the overlay. So uh -huh. that's the cheetah overlay. So maybe you want to try out cutting it with a Sophisticut. Okay, I'll try Just that. Just want to lay that right on top. And I know normally you'd think, oh, I can't cut rhinestones with, no. with a cutter, but these actually, you can. These are actually soft. They're made of acrylic. They really are. Well, this is fun. I've never used one of these. Yeah, the Sophistica is really fun. Yeah, I think it works easier if I put my hand on the top. Mm-hmm, and just crank it through. That is amazing that we're cutting something that has glitz and glitter in it and yeah. beads and... All and it's that. great for kids, you know, because they can cut Nobody right through cuts. these. Uh -huh. It's fun. Oh, look at that. Pops oh. right out. Yeah. Uh -huh. So then and you're going to just, just pop all those out. Uh-huh. Move these out of the way. Sure. Here, and I can uh, And, you know, the first thing that, that I did when I got mine, I was so worried that I'd done it wrong because the design was imprinted on the, on the plates. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. That's normal. It's that's supposed normal. to happen like that. Then over time, as you use your cutting plates, they will get all kinds of patterns on them. Uh -huh. It doesn't affect their performance at all. And they also no. sell replacement uh, cutting pads. Pads if yeah. you need them. But they do last a long time. Oh, they last so long. Actually, I've never even replaced mine. I, I do a lot of die <laughs> I cutting. I bet you do. But you can replace them if you want fresh a fresh one. Uh -huh. So then you just peel all these little guys out of here. Mm -hmm. And they even make tools, although I use a little, I use my X-Acto knife a mm -hmm. lot of times and yeah. just poke them out. or some tweezers. And uh -huh. uh, Sizzix actually has a little, a thing called a die pick, which I uh -huh. should have brought pick. one today. Mm -hmm. But anyway, comes okay. out really good. So then all you would do How pretty. is we well, would peel that. Thank you. Oh, it's, uh, that's right. It's you said adhesive. that was on it. So it makes it just so easy. You don't even mm -hmm. need glue or anything. Line up your little dots. Line it up. Yeah, like that. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, and then I you love can it. just run your stretchy string. And when you were working on that, you you cut out the part you wanted, but it does come like this. There's just it's long. It's got all different. It's ombre. Yeah, that's an ombre stretchy string. Uh -huh. I mean, it comes in all different colors and patterns. You could also run some beads through here if you really sure. wanted to glam it up. And then I'm just going to... And I love anything with the elastic because that way you can stretch it, put it on. You don't have to worry about those lobster clasps or Oh, yeah, yeah. All These are really, that... um, really comfortable and easy to do. Uh -huh. So just run that through. And then I would size it to your hand. So you mm -hmm. just want to put your hand in there. And then I would just Oh, adjust. that looks so pretty with this top. It is uh -huh. perfect. <laughs> Almost like I planned it that it, way. It is. <laughs> And then I would just tie a knot, uh -huh. like so. And then I just snip that. Mm -hmm. Ta-da! Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Well, I think look going to um, craft stores, places that carry all of your products, and then looking at the assortment of, of papers and other embellishments is what's really fun about doing crafting. Oh, Every yeah. project's different. Yeah, and you can really customize it to that special someone or a special occasion. Mm -hmm. And it's just, as you can see, really fun really and fast. fast. And once you get used to your machines, like this one was easier for me to get used to because I'd never used this one. But they all work basically the same. Yeah, they're, they're great machines. There's so much you can do. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I can't wait to see what you make with them. I can't either. I'm ready. <laughs> Thanks, Marissa. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to paint a sewing machine or serger. We'll see how much fun it is to rubber stamp on cookies and then show some design possibilities using push molds. One of my next guests will show how to use acrylic paint and a template to add designs to sewing machines and sergers. She uses a removable template and water-soluble paint, and she has lots of different designs to show us. 
When we talk about rubber stamping, we usually are referring to craft making, but one of my guests is a chef and cookbook author, and she will show how to actually rubber stamp an already top coated cookie. She'll show the type of ink pads to use and other tools for the project, and they are completely edible. And finally, another guest will show how to use a wooden wreath, various paints, and no-bake palmer clay to create a variety of fall home decor items. She uses a push mold to create the leaves and then adds metallic shimmers for that extra special touch. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a special booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. We are celebrating our 40th year on PBS. This booklet is titled the 40th Anniversary Series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this commemorative booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or on any of the other booklets we have available online. We would like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter too. Go to KENW.org and click on the Sign Up Now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. We would also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. We look forward to hearing from you.